twice in one day. What an honor to see all of you guys. You may be noticing that I'm not ruling Elder Joe Mackis. Uh, Elder Mackis has gotten sick, so he was unable to be here tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in for him. I hope everybody has a bulletin that has our order of worship and our songs. But the only appropriate way to start our evening of worship is to pray and to ask our God to bless our time. So let's do that now. Most holy and awesome God, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, a day that is devoted to you. It is different from every other day. And Lord, we thank you that you have given it to us and that you have given us clear instruction on what we're to do this day that we would remember it and keep it holy. We are here to worship you, for this is the day set aside for that worship. We thank you for this building and for this body. You have called us to this church, and so here together as a family, we lift up our hearts and our minds and our voices to you, praising you for all that you are, beseeching you for all that we need, and rejoicing in your sure promises that are ours in Christ Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you will help us. Help us to not be distracted this evening, but that we would give this time to you and that it would be fruitful for our Christian maturity. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. If you're able, please stand for the call to worship this evening. It comes from Psalm 138, the first two verses. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Our great God is the one we are here to worship. Let us sing to him how great thou art. Then I 
God certainly is great, isn't he? We have for us now, if you don't mind remaining standing, I will read for us this passage from Romans chapter 3 that should lead us into our confession of sin. Verses 10 through 20 from Romans 3. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps is in their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Please be seated. As this from God's word tells us, none of us are righteous. We cannot make ourselves righteous. We cannot even do the good that God requires of us unless it is done by the Spirit of God who gives us the ability, who makes us renewed after the image of Christ and no longer broken after the image of Adam. Please pray with me now a prayer of our confession of sin. I'll start by praying for us and then leave time for you to confess in the silence of your heart. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you for your law and for your word, for your precepts and your statutes and your commandments to us. For without them, we would not know how you expect us to be. We would not know that we are so broken. You have given each of us a sense of our sin and our brokenness in our own hearts. But without the revelation of your word, we would not know just how broken we are. And this passage has reminded us, or perhaps informed us for the first time, that there is no one who on their own is righteous before you. There is no one who could ever be with you and have their sin with them. No, Lord, we must throw ourselves upon you, upon your, your sacrifice. We must put our sins on Jesus the Lamb and have them paid for by his precious blood. Lord, we know that there are many ways that we have sinned against you. Even today we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. But Father, we recognize now that we have sinned against you and that we often forget how far we have fallen short of your glory. And we forget, Lord, that we need you. We need you every second. Father, please hear your people as they confess their sins to you in the silence of their hearts. Father, we do not want to walk down the path of the wicked. We want to be led by you on the path of righteousness. We have heeded your command to us. You have told us in many places in your word that we should confess our sins to you. 
and we have done this tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you that our confession does not leave us in a pit of despair, but that we confess in hope, knowing that our sin has been dealt with because of your great mercy. We thank you for your mercy and for your forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have here for us this assurance of pardon, which comes from the, the rest of this passage in Romans chapter 3. <clears throat> but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood, through faith, to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed, to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Our God has given us the faith in Jesus, and through that faith, he has spared us from our sins. Let's stand and respond to the forgiveness of God by singing together, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy, Song 2 from your bulletin. We have for us tonight a reading, and I'll be reading Psalm 37, so please open your Bibles if you have them, so that you can follow along. 
It is a psalm that works well with our passage from this morning and the themes of that service. And this psalm is going to remind us that there are two different kinds of people in this world. There are the wicked and there are the righteous. And the psalm helps us see what is the end of each of those. What is the end of the righteous? And what is the end of the wicked? Follow along with me as I read Psalm 37, a psalm of David. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just, and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the day of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. This psalm has a lot of connection to what we already talked about this morning. Did you notice that even the wicked were 
described as those wonderful parts of the meadows who are quickly vanishing. They're like flowers. They're just not there very long. Did you notice how many times it says that the wicked will be cut off like a branch on a tree that's not doing any good or that's infected? Rather than infecting the rest of the tree, a good uh, farmer would cut that tree branch so that it doesn't cause the rest of the tree to need to be destroyed. But I hope you also noticed what is in store for the righteous. There is rest. There is peace. There is an inheritance. And it's interesting because there's the two sides of the inheritance that we have to pay attention to. There's the eternal inheritance, that inheritance that is forever, which we have in Christ. But then there's also a temporal inheritance, one that we will see in this life. And I want to encourage you that no matter what the trouble seems like around us, it seems like more trouble depending upon which channel you watch the news, but the world is filled with troubles. That is true. And you do not have to worry about whether or not there will be justice wrought on those who are evil schemers bringing their schemes to pass, or whether we think because we see with our eyes only that there are evildoers out there in the world who are prospering. No, this is not how God operates. The wicked will never truly prosper, for even if it seems like they are not punished in this life, we know for a fact that they have no inheritance in the future that God is creating. This is what you have to look forward to, beloved, that as one who has been made righteous by Jesus Christ, your future is certain and sure, both in this life and in the next. So when you see all this craziness going on around us, remember what God says. He says, wait on him. Keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. He will give us what has been taken away from those who are in great power but are wicked because he loves us and we are his children. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. Brothers and sisters, let the Lord our God be your help and your strength in any time of trouble. Let us pray.